Welcome to the study of A-Level Psychology. In this video, we will look at how biologists explain OCD. By now, you should know behavioral, cognitive, and emotional characteristics of what defines OCD. But how does someone develop OCD? Biologists have a few explanations. So back up your trousers, skirts, leggings, and kills, because this could get a little complex. First, let's look at our DNA. Means the DNA of the soul. No, not that. I mean our actual DNA. There are two genes implicated in OCD, the COMP gene and the CERT gene, responsible for regulating the neurotransmitters, dopamine and serotonin, respectively. Some variants of the COMP gene produce too much dopamine, and some variants of the CERT gene produce too little serotonin, both of which are implicated in OCD. Had a stroke yet? Don't worry, it gets worse! No explanations include the neurotransmitters I just mentioned. I trust you to have the memory of Dory. They also include the actual structure of certain brain areas. Still, me, because this is where it becomes a bit of a maze. In the frontal lobe of our brains lays the basal ganglia, which contains the chordae nucleus. There's also the orbitofrontal cortex, which sends worry signals to the thalamus whenever it detects some sort of danger. And the thalamus translates this signal into emotional worry. It's the job of the chordate nucleus to say, Hold up, this is nothing to worry about. Before the signal reaches the OFC, those with OCD are thought to have an abnormally developed chordate nucleus, leading to heightened activity in the OFC, manifesting as symptoms of OCD. <sighs> I think I need to lie down. Can we say for sure if OCD is caused by biology? Billy et al. in 1998 conducted a meta-analysis that's supposed to say of 14 twin studies. On average, monozygotic or identical twins have a concordance rate that was twice as high as dizygotic or fraternal twins. However, concordance rate is NEVER! 100%. So while there is a genetic component, there must be environmental factors as well. We could also conclude a genetic link from other disorders. OCD shares its obsessive behaviour with Tourette's, autism and anorexia, with Tourette's in particular being found to be another expression of another gene found in OCD patients, according to Paul Selectman in 1986. Once again showing that there is a genetic basis, but that there is not one specific OCD gene. Instead, there is a collection of genes that can manifest as several other disorders. There are ethical concerns with the application of this knowledge. Scanning fetuses is the f that's really hard to say. Scanning fetuses to find the genes responsible for this disorder, for example, COMPT, may result in the gene being removed, which can be detrimental to the person in the future. That is, assuming the parents don't decide to have an abortion. So applying these therapies is controversial at best. Finally, you can use other explanations for why OCD occurs. Surprisingly, the two-process model can also be applied to the acquisition of OCD. What the hell are you talking about? Initial classical conditioning can occur with associated being dirty with falling ill, for example, producing anxiety, the obsession, over being sick. Operant conditioning maintains the anxiety through compulsive behaviours to prevent falling ill. This, once again, suggests psychological factors in conjunction with or instead of biological factors. On screen now are questions related to the biological explanation of OCD. Answer them as best as you can. If you notice bleeding from any of this on your body, Oh sh I'm bleeding, we drew blood. You're trying too hard to remember the areas of the brain I listed. Goodbye.